What do Enron, WorldCom, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, AIG, the countries of Iceland and Ireland, and mortgage-backed securities have in common? Each of them was given investment grade ratings by S&P until just before they collapsed financially. It's a stunning record of incompetence, one that should have put this flawed rating agency out of business in any true capitalist system. And now Standard & Poor's, perhaps as a makeup call, has downgraded the debt of the United States. Yet even while doing so, they made a $2 trillion error in their calculations, once again demonstrating why no rational economic player should pay any attention to them. And that's what happened. In the market panic that followed the downgrade, U.S. Treasury bills, which in theory should have become less desirable because of allegedly greater risk, instead became even more of a safe haven as investors pulled massive amounts of money out of stocks. Bond yields dropped to the lowest level in recent memory as the market, in short, gave the U.S. government a huge vote of confidence. Alan Greenspan said it best, there's zero chance that the U.S. won't pay its debts. Why does this matter? Why should we care? Because the fake debt crisis that has been dominating Washington is driving public policy in completely the wrong direction. If you're a capitalist, as I assume you are, then the markets are telling you that U.S. debt is not a problem. Individuals and foreign governments are willing to lend us seemingly unlimited amounts of money at ridiculously low rates. It's only within the U.S., and most particularly within the Republican Tea Party, that this is an issue. People wearing funny tricolored hats with only a tenuous grasp on reality or history have been driving the debate, and it's time that this ended. There's been a lot of loose talk about bond vigilantes forcing the government into harsh austerity programs to protect bond ratings. But here's what the manager of one of the nation's largest bond funds says we need to do. First, ease refinancing rules for homeowners who are underwater on their mortgages. Second, reorient our education system to produce more math, science, and engineering graduates. Third, spend immediately on infrastructure in order to put people back to work. In other words, create a demand for labor. Fourth, set up a public-private partnership to lend to small businesses, something that banks apparently are not willing to do. And fifth, Combine entitlement spending cuts with broad-based tax increases to get the debt under control. We have a jobs crisis. We have underemployment crisis. We have a declining personal income crisis. We have a crisis of confidence. We need to put people back to work. And we need to protect wages and benefits so that those who have jobs can actually support their families. We need to stop raising tuition at public universities so that young people can get the skills they need without taking on so much debt that they'll never get out from under. We need universal health care. To those who say we can't afford all this, I say, look at Germany. The strongest country in Europe, the Germans do pay very high taxes, but in return, get strong job security, universal health care, and six weeks of vacation in a booming, export-driven industrial economy. In America, we've cut taxes to the lowest level since Harry Truman, and we hear calls to reduce, the, reduce them even further, and yet have none of the benefits. No job security, longer work weeks than any other industrial society, a patchwork of health care that favors the rich and delivers very poor results when compared to other nations, and mountains of personal debt. What's wrong with this picture? A lot. It's time for a change, not a rhetorical change, but deep, systemic change. It's time for a change we can really believe in. This has been a Stream of Conscience Commentary. I'm John Hartwell. Thanks for watching.